is saying that the early Jehovah Witnesses, their symbols and everything that they were using were the same being used by the Masons, being used by the Mormons, and AKA Gnostic teachings and Gnostic ideologies. Because it also says the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code is written by a Gnostic, and he endorses what is called the Gnostic Gospels, meaning made up fairy tale gospels that have nothing to do with the teachings of Yeshua and have no historical backing whatsoever. Before we go any further, let me tell you about the largest apologetic ministry in the world. Answers in Genesis One of the main reasons children by college age are leaving the Christian faith is because they do not know how to defend the Christian faith against the secular attacks of our day. Use the link in our description to get access to biblically-based Christian educational resources, books, magazines, and other resources for all ages to bless your church, school, and home. Answers in Genesis for those who desire a deeper walk and a thriving faith in the face of a growing cultural adversity. Now back to this fire teaching. This is what I said. You are in a cult and you need to repent and you need to get out. That is what I'm saying today. Jehovah, I'm sorry. How can you say I once saw a Jehovah Witness said, how can you say that? We're not in a cult. We're not killing people. We're not hurting anybody. In the physical, no. But in the spirit, you're leading a lot of people into hell. And I'll prove it to you in a minute. But that is what I'm going to say today. Repent. Turn away, go back to the Lord that loves you. Go back and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord, that Yeshua is Lord. You leading a lot of people astray and you're leading a lot of people into the gates of hell. But guess what? We storm in the gates of hell and we going to get you out before you get there. Are you hearing this here? By the power of the Holy Spirit and by teaching the word of God. Let's go into the scripture today. We're going to read John chapter 5 because today I'm going to dive into more of the Jehovah Witness beliefs. I'm going to teach you because there's like a one and very few don't, a lot of people in the body of Christ, you don't even know what the Jehovah Witnesses believe. So that's what I'm going to tackle a little bit more today. So I hope you guys are ready. Have your swords with you. Let's go to John chapter 5 real quick. I got a lot to cover. And we're going to start at verse 19, okay? Now, this is what Jesus says, okay? Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, likewise the Son does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all men shall honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death to, into life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come out, those who have done good for the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing of myself. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Now let me stop right there because I need you guys to understand this 
because right here, um, if you go to what Jehovah Witnesses like to say about Jesus, because this is, and I'm pulling this straight from their website, okay? Let's go there real quick. And what they believe, let's take a look at this right here. What do they believe of Jesus? We follow the teachings and examples of Jesus Christ and honor him as our savior and as the son of God. Thus, we are Christians. No, you are not. However, we have learned from the Bible that Jesus is not almighty God and that there is no scriptural basis for the Trinity doctrine. Okay. That right there is false. So let me tell you what Jehovah Witnesses are. Jehovah Witnesses are more like Unitarians. True Christians are Trinitarians. They are Jehovah Witnesses. They are Unitarians, meaning that they don't believe in the Godhead. They don't believe in the triune God, which shows that they don't even understand what a God is. Because a god is not a person. A god is an office, a class, and a rank. And then there are three who occupy it. Are you understanding this here so far? So they don't believe that Jesus is God Almighty. Well, I can show you in the scriptures that what you're saying is false. He is God. He is God in flesh. And I'll prove that in a minute. But the, the fact that they said there's no scriptural reference of the Trinity, all they mean is, is that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. That's all they mean when they say that. When they said, they'll say something slick like, oh, show me where Trinity is in the Bible. Flesh creature, they're not called the Trinity. They are called the Godhead. You understand this here. And it is plainly shown in the Bible. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is even in the Hebrew writing. In fact, I don't know why the Jehovah Witness website doesn't show this. But this, they changed this up a little bit. Because what, if Jesus isn't God, then who is Jesus? They say they believe he is a son of God. Why do they call him son of God? It is because most Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is actually the archangel Michael. And no, I am not making this up. They believe Jesus is the archangel Michael that came down in human form. And when he died, it wasn't really a physical death. He just went back and he became Michael again. That's what a lot of Jehovah Witnesses believe. So they're worshiping angels. Actually, no, they don't worship Jesus. Which is kind of interesting because then we just read in their website that they said that they follow the teachings of Jesus. And yet here it is. Jesus says in John chapter 5, you honor him the way you're, you honor the Father. How do you honor God? Are you seeing this here? It says that all men shall honor the Son just as they honor the Father, which means how do you honor God? Let's see. You honor God through prayer. You honor God through worship. You honor God through praise. You honor God through your life. You honor God in all these ways. And yet you don't do that for Jesus. But yet you say you follow the teachings of Jesus or Yeshua. And Yeshua says, you're supposed to give me the same honor 
that you give the father. And he said, this isn't because I decreed it, but it's because my father in heaven decreed it. Uh Uh-oh. So really, you're not following the teachings of Yeshua. Well, yes, we do, because we love God and we love people, but you don't love the son. Yes, we do. We love Jesus. Then why don't you honor him the same way that you honor the father? Because he's not God. That means you don't love him. You don't know who he is. Hello. You don't understand who he is. You don't understand the death, the resurrection. You don't understand why he has to be God in order for that to even matter. Let me continue. Because we're just getting started with this cult. Unfortunately, I want to show y'all a little something because we just read that they said, uh, we believe in the same teachings of Jesus. Okay, watch this. That's a very good question. Do they follow the Bible or their Bible? It is true that Jehovah Witnesses have their own version of the Bible called the New World Bible which I will explain in a moment. Thank you, my sister. I can see that you are paying attention and I can see that you really want to learn this. Basically, this is why they're a cult. They pick and choose. Let's continue. So now I'm gonna show you something real quick. Make sure everybody can read that. Watch this. Many of the beliefs and symbols included in Watchtower publications during the leadership of Russell, meaning the leader who founded the Jehovah Witnesses, are what Jehovah Witnesses now claim to be a pagan and even a cult background. Uh oh. If you enjoyed The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown and are interested in the development of modern religions, you will be intrigued by this section. A number of the symbols and teachings discussed by Brown as having origins with the Knights Templar, Freemasons, and Illuminati, and tracing back to the Egyptians have been used by Mormons, Christian Science, and Russell's Watchtower Bible students, aka the Jehovah Witnesses. So in case you guys don't understand what this publication is saying, is saying that the early Jehovah Witnesses, their symbols and everything that they were using were the same being used by the Masons, being used by the Mormons, and AKA Gnostic teachings and Gnostic ideologies. Because it also says the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code is written by a Gnostic, And he endorses what is called the Gnostic Gospels, meaning made up fairy tale gospels that have nothing to do with the teachings of Yeshua and have no historical backing whatsoever. Basically, it's a satanic fairy tale. And yes, I said it just like that. Let's continue. In fact, the terms watchtower These are all the phrases used by Jehovah Witnesses. The terms Watchtower, Golden Age, Jehovah, New World Order, the symbols of the all-seeing eye, winged sun disk, two columns, pyramids, and Russell's strong Zionist stance are part of Freemasonry. Hmm. A great deal of discussion has centered on whether Russell, the founder of the Watchtower Society, had connections with Freemasons due to the many Masonic symbols introduced under his leadership. The evidence is not conclusive that Russell adopted these beliefs from Freemasons, and it is probable that he took these beliefs and symbols from Second Aventus 
Watchtower claims it was chosen as God's sole representative for being the only clean organization in 1919. Inclusion of pagan symbols in its worship until the 1930s raises the questions as to why God directed or even allowed symbols of this kind to identify his people, even well after the claimed cleansing of his spiritual temple in 1919. That's because this is a cult. They lie. Oh, I'll share this. Russell had great interest in the Pyramid of Giza and its relationship with Bible prophecy. Let me stop you right there. The Pyramid of Giza has nothing to do with the Bible. Do you understand this here? In fact, there's only a few times in the Bible where Egypt is even mentioned, okay? Egypt is mentioned quite a bit in the Bible, but there's nothing about God talking about the pyramid is this or the pyramid is going to be this, okay? So that right there shows you that he may not have been directly a mason. But there is clear evidence that he was influenced by Masonic teachings and Gnostic teachings. Are you hearing this here? Who here is learning something? We're just getting started. We're almost done with this part anyway. Let's go back. He had a fascination with pyramids, huh? Continued to use the Pyramid of Giza as part of prophecy until the 1930s. Russell's belief in the sign of the pyramid most likely came from the Second Adventist. In 1859, John Taylor published The Great Pyramid. Why was it built and who built it? He put forward the idea that the architect and supervisor of the Great Pyramid was not an Egyptian, but Noah. Oh, Lord, help me. Other pyramidologists believe it was Meshazadik. Piazzi Smith, an astronomer, an astronomer, accepted this idea in June 1876. He published an article in the Bible Examiner, a journal owned by George Stowe's in Brooklyn. George Stowe's went on to run a series of articles on the pyramid and its prophetic significance in the Herald of Life in the coming kingdom. In 1877, Joseph Sayes published a book on the pyramid entitled Miracle in Stone. Lord help me. If you continue to read, look, Russell's interest was particularly in the Great Pyramid of Giza built for Cheops. It is the northernmost of a group of three pyramids built in Giza and is the largest and oldest of the three estimated by archaeologists to have been built over 4,000 years ago. It is considered the most colossal single building ever erected. Its base points are accurately oriented to the four cordial points to the compass. Why am I saying this? Because the compass is the symbol of the mason. Pyramids are also used in masonry. Oh, look, the Bible Students Monthly, a teaching from Russell. And that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt for a sign and for a witness. He believes that this is the pyramid of Giza in Isaiah 19. Not only did God mention prophetically the great pyramid in Isaiah, but also in Jeremiah. He said signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day. Now, I'm going to need a Bible scholar preferably a Jehovah Witness, please show me in the Bible where it says that the sign was a pyramid. Because you do know that certain architectures in the Bible, they have no problem describing it in the Bible, right? Like they had no problem describing the walls of Jericho. They had no problems describing the walls of Jerusalem. They had no problems even describing the new heaven and the new Jerusalem that comes out of God in the book of Revelation. So do me a favor. 
Show me where it says that this is the pyramid of Giza. Are you hearing this here? You will not find it. In fact, do I really want to show y'all this? Because I feel like I'm traumatized. My wife is probably saying run or no. Let me show y'all something. The kingdom of God. This is a real government in heaven, not a condition in the hearts of Christians. Okay. Let's continue. Make sure y'all can read this. It will replace human governments and accomplish God's purpose for the earth. It will take these actions soon for Bible prophecy indicates that we are living in the last days. Uh huh. Jesus is the king of God's kingdom in heaven. He began ruling in 1914. No, you read that. You read that right. Forget that Jesus says when he's raised from the dead and all power, he said, all power of heaven and earth has been given unto me. No, I'm serious. The Jehovah Witnesses said that Jesus did not receive full authority and power until 1914. That was when the kingdom of God, he went into the kingdom and he was fully established. I'm telling you, these jag legs don't know the scriptures. Okay? Because how many of you know that the kingdom of God is not coming? The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God came when he delivered the kingdom message. You understand this here. It was established when Jesus first started his ministry. When he ascends to heaven and he sits at the right hand of God the Father, it's him establishing our place in the kingdom. Are you understanding this here? Not 1914. They really have no basis for this, but we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. Who's ready to learn quick beliefs of Jehovah Witnesses? We're just going to go over some beliefs and we're going to talk about quickly why they're wrong. So that right. the divine name, Jehovah witnesses believe that God's one true name, the name by which he must be identified is Jehovah. This is not true because what is the name that God says, this is my name and this is forever my name and this will be my name for now unto eternity. What is the name? It is not Jehovah. It is Yahweh. You understand this here. So for them to say it's Jehovah, you're, what's the biblical basis for that? Because I'll show you where he says Yahweh is his name, and that will be his name forever. In fact, the name Yeshua is Yahweh's salvation. You understand this here? Let's continue. Or y'all salvation, y'all way. But let's continue. Biblically, however, God is identified by many names. This is true. Elohim, yes. El Shaddai, which is honestly one of my favorites because I love that song, El Shaddai. Do me a favor. In the comments, let me know if you love El, um, El Shaddai because I love that song um, Adonai and Lord of Hosts or Yahweh um, tis, uh, ba. in New Testament times Jesus referred to God as Father or God the Father as did the Apostles okay that's cool let's continue Jehovah Witnesses believe that the Trinity is unbiblical because the word is not in the Bible and because the Bible emphasized that there is one God. Okay. So, yes, I totally agree. 
the song is fire. But the Trinity, no biblical basis for the Trinity, exactly like I said, it is because they say, well, the word Trinity isn't in there. All right. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to because let's go um, to First John chapter five. In fact, I'm so intrigued by this. I'm going to look this up in their Bible too. Yes, we're, we're, we're going into the enemy's camp for this one. We have to read what they say. Okay. Let's continue real quick. So they said that the Trinity, biblically, while it is true that there is only one God, meaning that they are in union, one meaning in agreement, and there's one office, capital G God, okay? God is an office. It is also true that three persons are called God in scripture because it's an office. The Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And they and each of these three possess the attributes of deity, omnipresent, omniscience, omnipotence, and eternality. I guess they mean immortality, whatever. Still further, each of the three is involved in doing the works of deity. The Bible indicates that there is three in oneness in the Godhead. Thus, doctrinal support for the Trinity is compellingly strong. We're going to get back to Jesus in a minute, but let me show y'all something, okay? We're going to go to the scriptures. I got to get back to the scriptures so that... First John chapter five. Okay, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. It is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is the truth. There are three who testify in heaven, the father, the word, and the Holy Spirit, and the three are one. There are three that testify on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are toward the one. Okay. First John chapter five clearly shows the Godhead. Does everyone see that? What does it say? Three that bear record or who bear witness in heaven and three who bear record on the earth. Do you see that? It's right there. There's your Godhead right there. And if you go to Romans chapter one, they're called the Godhead again. And if you look in scripture, you see that Jesus, Yeshua, is God, the son. This is confirmed in Hebrews chapter one, which is one of my favorite verses, as you all should already know. In fact, I'm going to go there right now. Because I love Hebrews chapter 1. What does Hebrews chapter 1 say? Oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe it says what God the Father says about the Son. And, well, again, I'm going to show you all the Jehovah Witnesses Bible in a minute. I'm telling you. Because this thing is a hot mess. But let me continue. So it says three bear record in heaven, three bear record in earth. These three are what? Does it say one? Okay. Does it mean that they're the same thing? No. One means what? In agreement, right? Okay, then. So somebody tell me how in the world these Jehovah Witnesses are getting that one means the same person. You understand this here? In fact, let me go on to the next thing because I want y'all to see something because I want y'all to learn something. Let's go back to the beliefs. What is it that they say? Believe that Jesus was created by Jehovah as the archangel Michael. See, I told you. 
before the physical world existed and is a lesser, though mighty God, little g. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I see these people, they want me to go off. They really do. Because number one, that's a fallacy. Let's go to the first John chapter five. And I'm reading from the Jehovah Witnesses. This is the one who came by means of water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and with the blood and the spirit is bearing witness because the spirit is the truth. For there are three witness bearers, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Oh, did you see that? They took out the witness of heaven because this is the witness God gives, the witness that he has given about his son. The person putting his faith in the son of God has the witness within himself. The person not having faith in God has made him a liar. Okay, concerning his son. Now, what is the witness concerning the son? All right. That right there, I have an issue with. Do you see how they didn't really show, like in original 1 John chapter 5, it clearly shows that Jesus Christ, the witness, is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit bears witness. But note that it doesn't say Holy Spirit, it just says Spirit. Meaning the human spirit knows who God is. That is not biblical. You understand this here. Let's go here real quick. Let's go back. Because I want y'all to see this. It says, so again, Archangel Michael, before the physical world existed, okay, it has the exact same divine nature as the father, okay, indeed, a comparison of the equates Jesus with Jehovah. Jesus himself created the angels, yes, and is worshiped by them, yes. And here's the final thing. Jehovah Witnesses believe that when Jesus was born on earth, he was a mere human and not God in human flesh. Okay, so I think this is a good place for me to tear this apart right here, okay? Would you guys like me to do that real quick by showing you the Bible real quick? Because I'm going to have fun with this. Okay? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 first. So do me a favor. Put it in the chat so I can make sure everyone's paying attention. Okay? So they believe that Jesus or Yeshua is the archangel Michael. They believe that he was created. They believe that when he was born, he was born as human, not God in flesh. Let me see. Is there anything else I missed? Hmm. Okay. So they believe he's the Archangel Michael. Okay. They believe that he was created. So he was created. Okay. So they believe that he's cre he's a creation, a created being. No, 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 no. Monty, listen. Remember, this is Gnostic teaching, okay? It's not supposed to make sense. <laughs> it's not supposed to make sense because they'll turn around and say well how can God be in the flesh you see they will flip this on you tossy turvy okay no but I'm glad that you guys are thinking now let me show you by the bible not even just the New World Bible, but the Bible. Why 
this is wrong, this is false, and how to combat it. Do you understand this? We have to know how to combat it by using the word of God, okay? Do you understand this here? You claim to be Christians. You open this door, not us. You claim to serve the same master as us. But we'll show you plain and simple. You are a cult. You have nothing to do with this. So let me show you something, okay? So let's go to Hebrews chapter one first. We're going to break this down bit by bit. So first, I'm going to destroy the thought that he's an angel, okay? I, I have to do that first. The son superior to the angels. Oh, we already started. For to which of the angels did he at any time say, you are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. So do me a favor, Jehovah Witnesses, show me in the Bible where God says to Michael that you are my son and today I am your father. Do you understand this? So that right there. So this is saying right here, this is something completely different. This is not an angel. Because to none of the angels does he say this to. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, now again, remember the Jehovah Witnesses believed that he was God's first creation, similar to the Mormons. Firstborn meaning he's the firstborn. First creation, that is not what firstborn means. Firstborn means highest rank, highest position. That's what it means. When it says he is firstborn, it is not saying that he is made by God or is born. It's saying he has the highest position, okay? Because God calls David his firstborn, okay? Firstborn of the kings of the earth, all right? And we'll show that in a little bit, but let's continue. He says, let all the angels of God worship him. Hello. So what does God the Father say? He says, all the angels, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, all the angels, the seraphim, the cherubim, all the angels are to worship who? Who are they to worship, class? Yeshua. Yeshua. They are to worship him. Let's continue. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angel spirits in the service of flame of fire. But to the son, he says, oh my goodness. What does he say? So clearly in the scripture, it says who the father's talking to. To the angels, he says, you are spirits and the servants are flame of fire. So he's saying you are to serve, you are to aid and help. He clearly establishes the roles of the angels. But to the son, to Yeshua, to God the son, what does he say? Your throne, O oh God, lasts forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. What does it? So to the son, he says, what? Your throne, oh God. So the father is calling the son what? Class? He calls him God. what? God, capital G. Not a God, little g, like Jehovah Witnesses will say. Oh yeah, he's a God. No, that's a little g. He's God the Father is saying to the Son, you are big G God, just like I am big G God. You are in the same class and rank of which I hold. Do you understand this? It's right there in the scripture. I didn't make this up. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, lasts forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. 
wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And, oh, it gets better than that. What does the Father say? And you, Lord. What does the Father call the Son? Lord. He calls him Lord. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. And the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they all will wear out like a garment. As a cloak, you will fold them up. And they will be changed, but you are the same. And your years will not end. But to which of the angels did he at any time say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Uh-oh. Hmm. So that right there says that Yeshua in the Bible is not an angel. Okay? Because he already shows in Hebrews chapter 1, God the Father says that to none of the angels. He makes it clear what the angels are. Ministering spirits to aid and help us. But this one, he says to the Son, what did he just say? He said the heavens and the earth are your doing, son. You made them all. The Bible says in John chapter one said everything was made by him and for him. So he cannot be a creation. Oh, I hope you understand that. Because he's the creator. You understand this here? Oh, I'm going to fry them on the Holy Spirit next time. But right now, I got to defend my best friend, Jesus. To Isaiah 59. And I want you to go to verse 16. Okay? I'm going to teach you how to prove Yeshua is God in flesh. Watch this. Then the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and I was astonished that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness sustained him. What does that mean right there? Meaning that God looked and saw that there was no man who could atone for sins. There was no man that God could rely on to, 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 to do his plan of salvation. No man could do it. Not Abraham, not Moses, not Noah. The Bible says he looked. He saw no man was capable of doing this. But look at what God says in Isaiah 59. He said, what? Therefore, his own arm. What does that mean? That means he used his own power, his own might. He did it himself. His own arm brought salvation to him. Did you see that? Yeah. It's saying right there that God, by his own power, by his own might, by his own doing, decided that, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to become flesh. And what I'll do is I'll atone for sins myself. And I'll reconcile the entire human race to myself. I'll do it because they can't. You understand that? Isn't that beautiful? How dare you belittle the work of Jesus? How dare you belittle the love of God that God said that there was no man who could do it. So I'll do it myself. 
I'll save mankind myself. You understand this here? That's why, no, do not tolerate that, that false doctrine. Do not belittle the work that Jesus did. It was astonished there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness sustained him. Meaning that when he became flesh, it was his own righteousness. Oh, come on, somebody. It was not our righteousness or flesh righteousness. It was his own righteousness that sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as the cloak meaning he was glad to do this. Now, watch this. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will make recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West, meaning Gentiles, from the West, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The Redeemer shall come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Do you see that? Isaiah 59 is clearly saying what? That God is going to come down. He's going to save but he's also going to bring judgment, meaning his reward is with him. So right there, if you show that scripture to a Jehovah witness, they'll say that's God talking, right? That's God who's bringing a reward. That's God who's saying he's going to judge. But yet we just saw in the scriptures in John chapter five, the father passed all judgment to who? The to the son. So all judgment is going to be ju judged, will be done by who? The son. But wait a minute. I thought only God is going to do the judgment. Hello? It is God the son who will do the judgment. It is God the son who is coming, who came in the flesh. And who paid the price for your sins. It was God the Son who did it. Are you understanding this here? Not the Son of God, God the Son. You understand this here? Not a mere human, not an angel, because no one could do this. Only God himself could redeem all of mankind and elevate them into a position beyond the angels.